Brought to you by Express Care Health and Skin Center. Get in, get out, get better. Welcome back and thank you so much for joining us. If you're just tuning in, we are talking about dust and air pollution and the effect it has on your health. And joining me now to take some of our viewers' questions is Express Care's Dr. Yik Alam. All right, Doc, so our first viewer is a traveler. Mm -hmm. And um, this person notices, when I travel, smog causes my face to break out. Is there any way I can prevent this? Mm -hmm. Just like we've been talking about trying to rinse off your face a few more times a day, uh, there may be more oil that's being created, uh, there may be heat, uh, you know, um, where there's air pollution, you'll actually generate a little bit more heat. Um, so trying to rinse off, I think, is the best suggestion. Yeah, I know I've noticed that, you know, I've been to um, Euro some European countries mm -hmm. and, and traveled internationally, and so I've noticed that once I, st when I step off the plane, um, it's like harder to breathe. Is right. that because of, uh, it's just different air? air it yeah, has. it may feel like the air is thicker to you because mm -hmm. it actually is. You know, with air pollutants at places like LA or big cities like Tokyo, you may feel that it's a little harder to breathe. But the other part of that is might be elevation. If you're mm -hmm. going to someplace that's higher up, you may feel like you're a little harder to breathe because we live right at sea level. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now our next viewer is asking, what is indoor pollution? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in certain environments, uh, maybe even your own home, you have the air conditioning running and you close all the doors and seal all the windows because of our typhoons, so you're sort of in a box. Oh. And then there's no air circulating. So what you've got in there is a perfect environment for dust, cat hair, dog hair, your own hair, skin flakes, um, uh, particles from your food that you've, you've cooked and so on, all kinds of stuff. And it's being circulated around. Then we have mold from the air conditioning and so on if you mm -hmm. haven't cleaned it. So um, this is an environment where you, you've got a lot of particles within your home and they're circulating around and they can make you feel unwell. So you could get um, you know, itchy eyes, hay fever, um, sneezing, just feel congested when you're within the house. And so the thing to do is at least try to air out your house at least a couple times a week and open the doors and windows, let the fresh air in. Okay. Now I noticed that, you know, sometimes when we get down with the cold mm -hmm. or something, we usually isolate ourselves in the room right. and, you know, the doors are closed, got the AC on, we're snuggled up in a blanket or whatever. Yeah. Um, but by doing that, are we actually, um, I guess, allowing ourselves to become sicker. more sicker, mm -hmm. say? It's possible, depending on how dusty your environment is and what you've really got going on with yourself. You know, there's, uh, there's the um, general advice of get a lot of fresh air. That's mm -hmm. pretty reasonable because then you get a lot of good oxygen into your lungs and you, you can heal faster. But uh, the other indoor pollution, of course, that we all know about is cigarette smoking. And many people think if they go outside and smoke uh, and they keep that, that, that activity outdoors, when they come inside, it's okay. Actually not, because it's all in your breath, it's in your lungs, you inhaled all this stuff and now you're breathing it out when you're in the home. And especially for people with little children, it's really important that you not do that or at least rinse off, rinse your mouth, rinse everything before you go touch the baby because babies are more prone to ear infections and sickness and so on. They're so sensitive. So even though you may be smoking outdoors, you're still bringing the air pollution inside when you're holding your baby. So please don't smoke around your baby and, and, and rinse your clothing before you touch the baby. All right. Now, we talked about indoor pollution. Our next viewer is asking, can outdoor pollution irritate my nose? Sure, you can be itchy, scratchy, and sneezy. Sneezing. <laughs> <laughs> from outdoor pollution uh -huh. of all kinds, even from nice uh, things such as scents and flowers and so on, you can get a lot of uh, irritation if you're prone to it. All right. Now, our next viewer is asking, whenever my neighbor burns in his backyard, I notice my eyes get really irritated and my skin breaks out. Mm -hmm. Is it what he's burning? Mm -hmm. It could be what he's burning, especially if people are burning plastic and tires, which are absolutely the worst things to burn. Um, but uh, from, from regular household products, even paper and so on, there's of course lots and lots of particles depending on how much b breeze there is, you know, they're, 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 they're going your way. And your eyes are very sensitive, your nose is very sensitive, and I do often have patients coming in with asthma attacks and hay fever and allergies because of their neighbors burning. So please be sensitive and courteous and do not do that um, and pollute your environment, you know. 
So uh, if, you're, if you have a neighbor who's unwilling to stop burning, what can you do? I think at that point it is really a good idea. If you see them burning, close your home, close your doors and windows, go inside, turn on the air conditioning, and try to keep your at least your home environment very uh, pure until that person stops the burning and hopefully it, the, the pollution has gone away. That's pretty important. Don't be outside if there's burning and you're sensitive. Yeah, and, and by the way, um, burning in a residential area is against the law, and you could be fined by GFD um, and EPA as well, so uh, you are not allowed to burn any trash right. or debris in a residential area. Now, moving on to our next viewer's question, do you recommend wearing a surgical or face mask when traveling to other countries? Right, or even in this type of situation, if you're in a dusty environment or if you're um, maybe doing some woodworking at home or working with certain chemicals, it can be useful to wear a mask. The type of mask you might want to get, though, is the I-95 mask. You can buy those in uh, like Home Depot, a place like that, and they're more of a fitted mask with a little, little, little bump on it, you know. With, they're not perfect, but they do filter a little bit better than the plain surgical mask. Surgical masks actually really don't do a whole lot, except for um, keep you from uh, from moving your saliva. Okay, it keeps sort of the saliva inside and so on, and, and some of the larger particles. But it's more surgical masks are more to keep you from spreading things to other people rather than keeping other things away from you. All right, yeah. thank you so much, Jack. <laughs> All You're right, welcome. so join us next week when we talk about how sweet is too sweet, and we discuss artificial sweeteners.